Welcome to Charles Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Monday the 22nd of July comes to you from London and I'm running on the new um, Refinitiv workspace. I've been running on it for several weeks with Updata. I uh, really love it. A lot of people have been pushed to upgrade to workspace um, and the move from Icon to workspace with Updata is really, really straightforward. Um, I really love the new workspace environment. It's really fantastic uh, and uh, as I say, I've been using it for several weeks now um, and I'm, I'm not going back. So I really like using that on Icon, uh, in, on Refinitiv. And the easy way to do it in Updater is you just go to your data services and in the data services um, menu, you just literally um, enable workspace. So Updater, of course, is compatible with dozens of different data feeds. You literally just switch off your um, your Refinitiv icon and you just switch on uh, here LSEG workspace. And Updata just moves all the histories across. Everything you've been using on Icon just moves to Workspace. Really, really seamless. Um, it's a great move. And I really do recommend uh, the upgrade to Workspace. It's, it, as I say, it's, it's really great. Um, so what a day Friday was. Uh, in fact, a lot of different data services were down. Of course, Updata was, is very is compatible with lots of different data services. Here, I'm running my watch list on Icon. This is Bloomberg, and this is Montel. Doesn't matter for Updata where the data is coming from if you're enabled for that service. So here, I'm running Bloomberg and um, Workspace into the same uh, system. And in fact, what it meant on um, f Friday was I could just literally switch my morning call uh, to Bloomberg. So all the codes in the morning call on Friday were Bloomberg because Bloomberg was up and running. Refinitiv and Tradeport were down. Um, so it was really quite key. And we were going through all the feeds that we're compatible with and a few were running, um, but many were down because of the uh, the IT crisis that we saw on Friday. But literally on Friday, you will have noticed your um, morning call report. This is the emissions contract here on Bloomberg. And then this morning back to running Refinitiv. So uh, really quick quite great in the ability to do that. And of course, here we see um, an emissions chart coming from uh, uh, Refinitiv. And then if I go to Bloomberg, it's the data coming in from Bloomberg. So whatever you're running on, you can just configure it. So it was a real boon for our users on Friday. And then of course, Montel, you could be running Montel data as well. So Updata is just compatible with whatever services you have um, coming into your system. So really, really powerful in that regard. So um, let's take a look at what's going on in the wider markets. Uh, so first of all, um, taking a look at the dollar. Interesting to see how the dollar has been breaking down. The market's starting to think that we are going to see um, interest rate cuts in the US. And so we are seeing that weaker dollar, the lower high, the lower low, this run in the dollar is very much um, coming to end on the medium term chart. So that's really quite interesting. And that means if we look at sterling, for example, because we've had obviously the UK elections um, having an impact there. If we look at sterling, really interesting to see these targets that were given to 141, 142. Uh, we break this 131 level and those are the levels that we start to look to keep an eye on your shorter term charts. That's going to be the, the real key there. Um, and if we look at some of the other uh, currencies, I was looking at uh, the Japanese yen this morning, really just climbing now, um, really, really strong there. And if we look at the weekly chart on the yen, we see here this really big break out of the consolidation pattern, massive upside target there, um, some 50% higher, really hard to imagine. But of course, that's a very, very long term target. But the reality is, the yen is proving even weaker than the dollar. Now, Bitcoin has been quite interesting lately, really just struggling to break to those new highs, new downside target there. So that's quite key as well. Um, so really very, very interesting um, there as well. Looking at the NASDAQ, um, we've had a really quite a big sell-off in tech. And of course, Friday's events didn't really help. We've got these downside targets, 1.5% lower, even 5% lower through the cloud on the 60-minute chart. And on the daily chart, we are just starting to see that deterioration. So that upside target might now be not happening or taking longer to fulfill. We are still above the cloud on the daily chart, but on that 60-minute chart, we are seeing the sell-off. So that's really 
quite key. And we're seeing the futures down this morning, the S&P future um, quite significantly lower. So it really is a sign that we are seeing um, a sell-off occurring in US stocks. And we see here on the S&P future, that downside target was given um, back at 5.642 on the S&P, saying to 5.497, so a 200-point sell-off there. And so really quite key. Looking at uh, Europe this morning, we're seeing the uh, FTSE future actually bucking the trend. It's actually up. Uh, So that's looking a little bit better. But if we look at the DAX in Germany, um, we are down two thirds of percent here. Um, Really, the US market not helping matters. So that's really quite key. Um, We'll look at the energy mix in a minute. But taking a look at some of the other things that are going on, gold, of course, that's been really interesting lately. And we are seeing this downside target that was met on the 60 minute chart. Still do have a very big upside target on the daily chart, but that 60 minute chart target met as soon as we broke below that level. That's pretty much where we went to. It actually happened a little bit quicker. And now we're just watching these key levels um, to where we go next. And we're seeing also big downside moves in silver. Um, That's also been really interesting. Big upside target, but that downside targets uh, here. So we're seeing that silver falling away there below the cloud on the 60 minute as well. US 10 year yields, uh, it's interesting looking at that dollar chart earlier, looking at uh, 10 year yields, we're seeing here that uh, push higher, um, just looking stronger again on the short term, on the on the long term, we're still um, weaker. Seeing some really big sell offs in um, tech, um, just taking a look at Microsoft, of course, they were um, a big um, uh, one in the news on Friday with a sell-off. Interestingly, that we had these um, downside targets already in place well before these events. So kind of a bit spooky that that's, uh, you know, bad news happens in um, downtrends, but that was really quite key. And of course, the big story is NVIDIA and, and so many people asking what's going on with NVIDIA. Interesting how we saw that breakout, the upside targets met, but here we see the lower high, and now the lower low. So this is really the first signs that NVIDIA may well have topped. And if we look at the 60 minute chart, uh, we see downside targets that were given back in June, another one given uh, the middle of this month, uh, these targets met. Downside targets being met um, is bearish confirmation. We do have a little mini upside target and we've got these key levels to watch, but really interesting there for NVIDIA. So uh, keep an eye on those targets on the shorter term charts. Now, if we take a look at the energy mix, Really quite key here. If we take, um, first of all, just take a look at um, crude oil. Uh, we're seeing these downside targets just emerging here. Really just a struggle and a new downside target this morning on the 60 minute chart. So definitely one to watch. US nat gas looking uh, a little bit better actually. Uh, we're seeing this upside target that was nearly met, a new upside target on the 60 minute chart this morning. So not so bad there. Now, carbon emissions in Europe, that's really been um, a pretty tough situation with these downside targets being generated all the time. In the last few uh, days, we've just seen more and more downside targets being generated. We are just starting to cross below the cloud. We've been covering that every morning in our morning call, of course. Uh, And if you want a copy of the morning call, just message me. Uh, Taking a look at gas, we're down again quite strongly this morning. We were bearish in our morning call out this morning. 60-minute chart targets pointing lower. You really cannot ignore them. This 30 euro 50 level is what's really quite keen to hold now. And if we take a look at Germany, and power. Um, That's fared a little bit better, but we are seeing here downside target happening as well, wandering below the cloud. This upside target may well be off the cards if we start to see new downside targets developing. Watching the prices today, that's going to be key. That's it for today. Until next time, happy charting. Bye for now.